Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on Introduction to Routing Concepts, Part 2. Today I'm going to be talking about routing metrics, routing aggregation, and then I'm going to conclude with a brief discussion on high availability. We have a fair amount of ground to cover, not a whole lot of time, so let's go ahead and begin this session. Of course, I'm going to begin by talking about routing metrics. It is quite common for there to be more than one route available to a remote network. Routing protocols use metrics to determine which route is the best route to reach those remote networks. Each routing protocol will use its own set of metrics in determining which routes to which networks are placed in its routing table. The same basic metric may be used by different routing protocols, but when this occurs, the metric is usually implemented in a different manner through the use of different algorithms. The first metric that we're going to discuss is the hop count. The hop count is the number of routers between two endpoints. This is determined from the sending router's perspective. The maximum transmission unit, or MTU, is another metric that is used by routing protocols. The MTU is the maximum allowed size of a packet measured in bytes that's allowed through an interface. The standard MTU for Ethernet is 1500 bytes. Packets that exceed the MTU must be fragmented into smaller pieces, leading to more packets leading to a slower connection. Bandwidth is another common routing metric. Bandwidth is a measure of the speed of the network connection. The speed is commonly measured in either kilobits per second, megabits per second, or gigabits per second. Another common metric is latency. Latency is a measure of time that a packet takes to traverse a link. When latency is implemented by routing protocols, the total amount of latency or delay to go end-to-end -end between two points is what is used in the metric. The administrative distance, or AD, is probably the most important metric that's used on routers. The administrative distance is the believability of a routing protocol's advertised routes. Different routing protocols are considered to be more believable or trustworthy than others. Routers use the AD to help determine which routing protocol to use when more than one protocol is installed on the router. The lowest AD of an advertised route will determine the protocol that's used. There are some common standard administrative distance. First up is the directly connected route. That's a direct link between two routers. That has an AD of zero and it is the most believable or trustworthy of routes. Next is the statically configured route. It has an AD of 1. External border gateway protocol has an AD of 20. It's still fairly trustworthy. Internal EIGRP has an AD of 90. It's not as trustworthy as BGP, but it is more trustworthy than OSPF, Open Shortest Path first, which has an AD of 110. ISIS has an AD of 115, so not quite as believable as OSPF, but more believable than RIP, which has an AD of 120. External EIGRP has an AD of 170, and internal BGP, and I've never seen internal BGP used, has an AD of 200. Now if you see an administrative distance of 255, that means that that route is not believable at all. As a side note, the AD can be set by an administrator. So if you are running both OSPF and ISIS on a router, but you want ISIS to be used, you could actually set OSPF's AD to a higher number 
then ISIS, and then ISIS would always be used before OSPF. Now let's move on to route aggregation. Without some mechanism put in place, routing tables would soon become very large and highly inefficient. Through careful planning, network administrators use a process called route aggregation to condense the size of routing tables. They do so through the use of classless interdomain routing, CIDR, to summarize routes to different networks. Route aggregation is common in networking. Let's take a look at an example of route aggregation. Suppose we have a router that has the following networks on its serial 0 slash 1 interface. It has 10.1.1.0 slash 24 known on that interface, 10.1.17.0 slash 24, 10.1.32.0 slash 24, and 10.1.128.0 slash 24. All of those networks are known to that interface, that S slash 0 slash 1 interface. These routes are what are known as contiguous routes. They're all in a line. They can be summarized or aggregated by a common CIDR entry in the routing table. They could all be summarized by the following entry, 10.1.0.0 slash 16. Now there is a warning about route aggregation. Route aggregation takes careful planning during the network design phase. That above example would not work if the serial interface 1 slash 1 on that same router was connected to network 10.1.2.0 slash 24 because that new network makes those networks on, on the 0 slash 1 interface non-contiguous networks. All the known networks are no longer all in a row. This leads to the fact that the routes could no longer be aggregated or summarized. Let's conclude with a discussion on high availability. Part of a network administrator's job is to ensure that networks remain up and active for the maximum amount of time. In an effort to ensure that networks don't go down, administrators often remove single points of failure. A single point of failure in a network is the point where a single failure will cause the network to cease functioning. Network administrators often use high availability techniques in order to remove those single points of failure. An example of a high availability technique is the use of redundant links to outside networks. Hot standby router protocol, HSRP, is a specific example of a high availability technique. HSRP is a proprietary Cisco method of creating a fault tolerant link using two or more routers with connections outside of the local subnet. The two routers are connected together as well as having connections outside of the local network. A virtual IP address is created and shared between the two routers. Devices on the network are configured to use that virtual IP address as their default gateway for packets leaving the network. If a single router goes down, the link outside of the network is still available. Another high availability technique is Virtual Router Redundancy Protocol, VRRP. It is an IETF, Internet Engineering Task Force standard that is similar in operation to HSRP. That concludes this session on the Introduction to Routing Concepts, Part 2. I discussed some routing metrics, then I moved on to route aggregation, and I concluded with a brief discussion on high availability. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I look forward to doing some more.